Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this RedGamingTech.com video, we're going to be discussing and analysing tech news which, as usual, has popped up in the past 24 or so hours. And by golly gosh, what a day in technology it's been. There is so much news, in fact, that we're separating the news into two videos. Amy is currently in the process of recording one, and she's going to be covering topics such as the PlayStation 5. And I am also, unfortunately, not on camera today because I was running a bit late with some client work that I was doing, plus also... I have been uh, in the middle of producing a couple of other videos which will be up over the next few days, including one really silly but fun one. I think a lot of people are going to get a kick out of it, and it is very silly, but it's going to be a lot of fun. Let's just be honest, that's kind of the most important thing sometimes. Anywho, getting back to the topic, or at least one of the topics we'll be covering, Intel and Comet Lake actually have its release date confirmed by an oopsie by a company. The company in question is ECS, and they produce mini PCs in Japan. Uh, the product range is called Liva, if memory serves. L-I-V-A. Hopefully that's how you pronounce it. Anyway, they were putting out a roadmap of their products over the next several months. And guess what they accidentally outed? Yeah, you guessed it. Numerous things were confirmed that we kind of knew about already including things such as Ice Lake and blah, 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 which, frankly, we don't really care about, at least for now, on the desktop side of things anyway. But what they did confirm is the 400 series chipset, which, of course, is going to be constructed specifically for Comet Lake. And with it, we also have the release date of Comet Lake as well. So Comet Lake looks like it's coming in the first quarter of next year and this actually ties in extremely well to a couple of leaks that have already surfaced one of which was from earlier on this year and that's from the website x fastest we actually got a lot of platform details from that including the fact that the socket would be lga 1200 and the tdp well the power uh, for the enthusiast is 125 watts now i just want to stress that because uh, Intel are bumping up the core count to 10 cores, 20 farads. There is definitely some hardware differences on the platform, and there are a few other changes as well. Although, of course, it is Skylake X based. I've heard mixed things from a couple of sources of mine regarding clock frequency and whether Intel are going to raise clock frequency uh, compared to, let's say, the 9900K. To Clarify what I mean here, so if four cores were active with the 9900K, whether, I don't know what it's going to be called, but let's just call it a 10900, would have higher clock frequencies in turn, and obviously with up to 10 cores, it's going to be very interesting to see what the all-core turbo would be. I don't think that Comet Lake is going to be AMD in a lot of applications, but I do think Intel have... The potential, if they do a good job at uh, cranking up the clock speeds as high as humanly possible, and also pricing the products at a decent enough price, and obviously one of the benefits of the chiplet approach from AMD is that they can get away with lower pricing, simply because Intel CPUs are a monolithic die, which, you know, we've kind of discussed that ad nauseum before, so I'm going to skip, uh, skip over it mostly in this video. So the bottom line is, it's going to come down to pricing, clock frequency, and obviously availability as well is going to be a, a big one. If you can't buy the processors, it doesn't matter if they charge a dollar and it outperforms everything AMD has. You know, if you can't buy it, it's irrelevant. So to me, it's going to be Intel probably will have advantages in gaming, possibly as well uh, certain video encoding because that can be definitely very frequency-based, and some applications don't necessarily scale across a crap ton of CPU cores. That's a technical term, crap ton of CPU cores. So I don't think Intel are going to beat AMD, but I think in certain key applications, they may have uh, at least enough of an advantage to be able to market to those. The other thing for Intel, of course, is it's going to be very interesting what they do with segmenting the product lineup with uh, hyperthreading slash SMT, Personally speaking, I would love for them to just not do what they've done in the past and really not really kind of be super aggressive with uh, with hyperthreading. I would like for them to have hyperthreading with a lot more processors. 
So I would like, for example, to see a 10 core, uh, 20 thread processor, hyper threading on an eight core CPU as well as a six core CPU and for the prices to be pretty good as well. But we can only wait and see. Moving on, however, from Intel, and we are going to be discussing lots of AMD news, including one that I've done an article for, and that would be the third generation of Threadripper, as well as some Zen 3 information. I'm going to begin with the Zen 3 information because, quite frankly, it's the fastest of the pieces to cover. So there is a very infamous website by the name of Chip Hell, and a leaker on there who's also kind of well known for AMD stuff by the name of Zoo. And he was recently discussing Threadripper uh, 3000 plus also Zen 3, which as I mentioned is going to be the one we're going to focus on first. So what we do know from AMD's own roadmap is that the design is currently complete for Zen 3 and Zen 4 is in design. What that basically means is that they are currently testing the uh, processor that is the Zen 3 processors right now. So that is that they've constructed probably very early engineering sample CPUs and they are basically figuring, okay, does this explode when I put it into the pros into the PC? And the answer is no, according to Zoo and slash on chip hell. And obviously this is a rumor. I'm not painting this as 100% accurate. He believes that currently the chips are capable of running Windows. They do not crash, but the processor's performance isn't known over Zen 2. To be clear, what he's referring to here is if you run the chip, what is the performance versus Zen 2? Most likely the same clock speed, so IPC information and so on. What is confirmed as well is that Zen 3 seems to be running at a higher clock frequency compared to the second generation of Zen although the clock frequency wasn't explicitly stated. It's going to be really interesting what happens with Zen 3 in terms of the features that we do know. It is built on the 7nm plus process, which does definitely provide a bit of leverage in terms of clock frequency. And also you can pack in more transistors. It's about 10% additional, uh, sorry, reduction there with Zen plus. Oh, sorry, with 7nm plus. I'm going to be super curious what Ryzen 4000 actually looks like. Are AMD going to increase the number of cores for Ryzen 3000? I think it's going to be a while before we start getting anything close to accurate benchmarks. For Zen 3, most likely, probably some of the facets of the chip are not working correctly. For example, and this is just a pure example, maybe heavy AVS, AVX instructions cause the chip to just you know crash or something like that. But it does look like the chips are at least coming on well and that they're not falling behind schedule, which is definitely really good news. The normal thing, if you are interested about tech news, then definitely subscribe to the channel. And I can't remember if I've said it or not because my brain is just fried today. So if you if I didn't, you can check this out in an article. I'm pretty sure I said it, but my brain is literally mush. So the next thing I want to discuss from the same chap, and this tallies very nicely with a rumor slash, well, actually not even a rumor, something that we covered a couple of days ago. So the USB uh, website, that is obviously the consortium which basically deals with USB standards. It's to make sure that everyone is on the same page with USB. So what that also means is that they need to make sure that they conform to certain standards, which means that they need AMD or Intel or whomever needs to uh, submit their product. So uh, a couple of days ago, I covered this and one of the updates we saw was Epic 7002. That's not the most interesting one. After all, we know Epic has been released and well, shock and horror. I'm going to, you might need to sit down for this one, but Epic supports USB. That's not really surprising, uh, but it is a specific entry, 7452. Directly under that, though, uh, was the 2019 premium chipset, also created by AMD. And what's really interesting, uh, I know this was recently updated. Uh, I said the same thing in the previous video, but if you didn't watch that one, basically I checked it, well, I guess now it would be about two weeks ago, but back then it was maybe about a week and a half-ish ago, uh, I checked it, and the only thing that was listed under that was the X570 chipset. Since then, TRX40, WRX80, and TRX80 have been added. And I made a prediction video that I believe that Threadripper, based upon this, because WRX80 would be epic, most likely. Therefore, TRX40 and 
80 would probably mean there were two lines or two different chipsets for Threadripper. And I speculated, and it was a bit of a stab in the dark, but I predicted that 4 may indicate the uh, fact that we would see quad channel memory for one line and TRX-80 would maybe be eight memory channels, so it would be a lot more epic-like, haha, in its implementation. Well, Zoo actually seems to confirm this, and obviously at the end of the day, this information is not confirmed by AMD, so if it turns out to be wrong, I don't know what this person's sources are. So according to him, there will indeed be two product lines for Threadripper. The first product line will see a launch this year, but the professional line, which will be for workstations, will launch next year. What he isn't clear about yet is whether the core count will differ between the professional and mainstream lineup of the Threadripper processors. Now this makes a great deal of sense, because back when I first leaked the July 7th release date, for uh, Ryzen 3000, as well as a whole bunch of other stuff, including the fact it would be 16 cores. So that was much earlier in this year. I believe it was like, I started to leak that information in January, February, and March. But in one of the leaks, I don't remember which one, I think it was the July the 7th one or the, the leak after that. I believe it was the, the 16 core confirmed video. But anyway, it, it doesn't really matter. The fact is that one of the things that my source told me um, was that AMD were having massive problems internally, not with the creation of the hardware, but in terms of marketing. Now, what I mean here isn't AM4 marketing, because at the end of the day, it's not very difficult to market 16 processor cores on AM4. It's like trying to market to someone who is in the desert dying of dehydration, would you like this bottle of water? It's really easy to market that. What isn't so easy to market, though, is the Threadripper processor and how do they put the marketing message out for that. And also, you also, you also need to remember Rome as well is kind of poking them in the rib because what they don't want to do is eat into the sales of Epic, uh, Rome, a, a Rome, of course, for those who don't know, is the second generation of Epic processors, which is for the server. So what they have to do is be very careful, very mindful. So what it appears like to me is that AM4 goes up to 16 cores, which is plentiful for the average user. So for the sake of argument, you're doing video encoding, you're doing streaming, you're doing uh, content creation or 3D rendering or whatever... Generally speaking, there are definitely fringe cases who, for example, may be doing lots of 4K or 8K video encoding while doing other stuff. But for the average person, particularly the hobbyist, 16 cores is certainly enough for those purposes. And then I suspect they're going to have Threadripper, which is going to be for their prosumer market. It's going to be for folks who are kind of buying Threadripper now. For example, maybe hardcore streamers. It may be for people who do content creation, maybe a little bit of simulation work, virtual machine work, that type of thing. But doesn't necessarily need a crap ton, once again, a technical term, of I.O. Maybe they don't need all of the PCIe lanes, 128 or whatever, of, um, of Epic. Maybe they'll cut that down to 64. That's just a pure guess. I don't know that for a fact. Maybe they feel that they don't need as much RAM uh, support. Maybe they'll cut down the amount of RAM that this can handle. And crucially, they may also just limit the core count to 32. That's not confirmed. That's a guess on my part. And also just have quad-channel memory. But then, for fringe usage cases, for people who really need as much performance as possible, but maybe don't need error correction memory or what have you, maybe that would be... Uh, a workstation type of system. So it would be a more manageable system than what we currently have. And Intel have done kind of similar. Don't forget, we have two Intel uh, platforms. It seems oh so long ago now, but Intel did release a couple of Skylake X products last year. They released the i9-9000 uh, series, which the top-end uh, SKU was the 9980XE, 
and that of course was based on 14 nm and had up to 36 uh, threads, 18 cores, but they also launched a workstation, they launched the Xeon W3175X for its flagship, and it was once again Skylake X, but did use a different chipset, X299 of course, for the core uh, i9 Skylake X processor, but the chipset for the Xeon workstation was actually um, C612E, and a lot of the stuff was very similar between the two platforms, although the TDP of the Skylake X workstation was ridiculous. It was like 250, 255 watts, something insane. But critically, it also had considerably higher thread count. So it went up to 56 threads, 28 cores, versus just 18 cores, 36 threads. So potentially that's what uh, AMD are going to be doing here to help separate the markets a little bit and to get as much money as humanly possible, which of course makes sense and it makes sense as well in terms of just the marketing strategy, what to sell and at the end of the day, some people just don't need the uh, the insanity of quad of uh, eight channels. Oh, sorry, eight memory channels and all of this stuff. So what they don't want to do is raise the price of Threadripper motherboards to insane prices when someone doesn't need that. But what they do need is more uh, I/O just for the sake of argument compared to AM4. Anyway, there is lots of other tech news that we could go through today, quite honestly. But I think that's a pretty good place to call it. So hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Uh, if you did, then, well, by golly gosh, you know what to do. You can subscribe to the channel for much more stuff. And I hope you have an amazing day. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.